All right, all right, we gotta get this channel back on track. See, I thought we talked about cartoons here, but lately everything's just been Nintendo, Unisonis, and getting run over. Pfft. Well, my leg isn't bleeding anymore, so let's get back to the cartoons. So, what shows should we talk about? Ed, Ed and Eddie? Regular show? Steven Universe for the seventh time? Hmm. Ooh, what about Dave the Barbarian? Yeah. <sighs> It's gonna be one of those videos. A couple years back, I did a video called Weird Cartoons You Probably Forgot About. And honestly, I kinda softballed it. I mean, let's be real, everyone remembers Invader Zim, Billy and Mandy ran for six seasons, and heck, Chowder was on the freaking Grammys last year. So I wanna try this again, but go even more obscure. Seriously, if you guys remember any of these shows, let me know in the comments. And it just so happens that one of my all-time favorite cartoons growing up is one I've never heard anyone talk about, Dave the Barbarian. This 2004 Disney Channel show followed the adventures of a barbarian named Dave, big surprise, and his family. Two sisters, Candy and Fang, Uncle Oswich the Wizard, their pet dragon, and a talking sword. They're all looking over the kingdom of Udragoth while their parents are away, with the older sister, Princess Candy, being the one in charge. Now, you might hear this premise and think we could have a really fun fantasy adventure series on our hands, but no. Like I said, this was one of my favorite shows growing up, which can only mean one thing, Yes, as dumb as bricks. Yep, this is the exact kind of show Baby Fofi lived for back in the day. Pure stupidity, tons of fourth wall breaks, and kinda random humor. I mean, the show's big villain was the Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Piggy. There was a My Little Pony with the voice of Christopher Walken. Dave sang songs about pancakes. This was prime 2000 stupid, and I ate it up. The episode that always stood out to me was about Candy stepping down from the throne and Dave, the dumbest of the dumb idiots, taking over. This goes about as well as you'd expect, with the kingdom eventually overthrowing him because, and I'm not making this up, he forced them all to watch his stage musical about pastries. I'd say you can't make this crap up, but I, someone did. Someone thought of this, wrote it down, and then it was professionally animated and put on the Disney Channel for stupid kids like me who still sing those dumb pastry songs in 2021. Dave the Barbarian was the crown jewel of the Disney Channel, in my opinion. So naturally, it only ran a year and reruns aired at like 3 a.m. And as far as I can tell, the show's never been re-released for DVD or streaming. So one of my favorite childhood shows is just lost to time. Eh, it's probably on YouTube somewhere. But I mean, that's Disney. They're not really known for being super weird. Even their forgotten shows aren't that out there. Nah, I wanna talk about some junk, dude. And if you wanna see some real random junk, there's no better place to go than 2000's Nickelodeon. I love Nickelodeon. They've released some all-time classics that I still love today. But compared to everyone else, they are just chock full of weird, fever dream shows no one remembers. Like, I constantly have to remind myself that Mighty B wasn't a figment of my imagination. There are so many old Nick shows I could go on about, but today I'll keep it to just three. Back at the Barnyard, Tack and the Power of Juju, and Butt Ugly Martians. Some of you might remember Barnyard, that 2007 movie that was basically Toy Story with barn animals. They can talk and party and cause mischief, but they can't let the humans find out. <laughs> It was one of those Nickelodeon animated movies that literally only existed to justify starting a TV show afterwards, like Jimmy Neutron. I saw the movie in theaters and it was fine. I watched the show when it came out later that year and it was less fine. But they just kept showing it over and over on Nickelodeon and Nicktoons Network. It was always on in the mornings before school, it was on during the day on the weekends. I could not escape Barnyard. And I didn't really like it. I went back and watched some episodes and I swear, I don't remember the human characters being so disturbing. The animal designs are fine, I guess, but God, every single human in this show just looks heinous. It's kind of hard to look at sometimes. And I don't remember the show being particularly interesting at the start, which didn't really help things. But as the show went on, it started getting weirder and more meta. The writing felt more stupid and random. Admittedly, the Barnyard movie did have some kind of impactful dramatic moments despite how silly everything was. But the show wasn't having any of that. You got a big suspenseful scene going on? Pfft. 
<laughs> nah. Let's interrupt that garbage with a pig dressed as a doctor. It felt like the people making the show just stopped giving a crap and got weird with it. And that's when I started kind of liking the show. Again, fourth wall breaking dum dum comedy was all I needed back in the day. Plus, it's one of the only talking animal shows I know of that has a dang ferret in it. He's always trying to eat his best friend the chicken. It's a good time. But where Barnyard was a show I didn't like at first, but eventually did, Tack and the Power of Juju was the exact opposite. So back in the day, Tack was a series of video games produced by Nickelodeon. The first game came out in 2003, and it was your classic 2000s action adventure game for kids. You play as a young shaman's apprentice named Tack, run around, jump on stuff, do magic, and beat up animals. It got a few sequels, so I guess it did all right. But while the game was fun enough, the cool parts were these cutscenes that, at the time, had pretty impressive animation and voice acting for a kid's game. At least one as out of nowhere as this. And of course, in the first minute, they're breaking the fourth wall, so you know I was gonna like it. I played Tac 1 and 2 to death when I was a kid. I quoted the jokes all the time, and I even still have some of the toys from back in the day. It was yet another of my weird childhood obsessions that no one else ever talks about. And all this culminated in 2007, again, when Tack and the Power of Juju got its very own cartoon on Nickelodeon. Yes, the games came before the TV show. Anytime I see people talking about Tack, they get it mixed up, thinking the show came first and the games were based on that. No, that's wrong. I am very passionate about this. But yeah, I remember being so excited for the Tack cartoon. The cutscenes in the games were basically their own mini cartoons, and I loved those. So this was gonna be big. I sit down to watch the premiere, and it's boring. Dang it! The show was, I guess, what you'd expect. It was the same setup as the games, but with no real plot. Just your standard, boring, run-of-the-mill Saturday morning cartoon show. Stuff you've probably seen a thousand times already. But unlike the games, it wasn't funny. None of the voice actors from the games came back except one, and somehow the animation is worse than the first game that was four years old at this point. I tried to like this show for a while, but not a dang thing about it was even remotely interesting. And within a few weeks, I gave up on it. And Tack's been dead ever since. Speaking of death, but ugly Martians. Jumping back even further now to 2001, we've got another CG cartoon that aired on Nick. This one's about three aliens that try to invade Earth, but give up once they see how cool it is. And this is one of those childhood cartoons that I look back on and think, why, why did I like this? Like, even back then, why did I like this? I mean, it's not funny, it's not exciting, and it is ugly. This CG did not age well, and I guess they knew that from the start because they put it right in the name. I guess it's trying to be a comedy action show, taking ideas from like Power Rangers and Reboot, very late 90s stuff, but Come on, man, look at this. Jimmy Neutron was only a year away from premiering on the same network. This show's just really dumb, man. And like, not in the good way. The Martians' names are Bebop Aluna, Tutti Fruity, and Dua Diddy. They sing and dance. Two of the main characters are voiced by the same guy, and they're not even trying to make them sound different. Last time I tell you my password. Oh, look, TV. So yeah, uh, not good. But for some reason, I liked it. I remember watching it quite a bit when I was little and somehow not being greatly disturbed. Heck, I even remember collecting the Butt Ugly Martians Happy Meal toys, which yeah, there were Happy Meal toys. Seems like a big deal for a one season show no one liked. Oh, wait, they were Burger King toys. All right, that checks out. For whatever reason, Baby Fofi actually liked the Butt Ugly Martians and it's just been living in the back of my mind for the last 20 years. I had to get it out somehow. But of all the cartoons I grew up on, there was one that rose above everything else. One of the most important shows of my entire childhood and it never even aired on TV. That's right, we're going back to the year 2000 now to talk about a web cartoon. Now, if you were around on the internet back then, you probably do remember this, but not nearly enough people know about it, and when else am I gonna get the chance to talk about this? It's Homestar Runner. So, back in third grade, I'm working on a school project when I hear a friend watching the same dang video over and over. Eventually, I get tired of it, I get up to see what they're watching, and it's this weird looking cartoon on a website called homestarrunner.com. I actually thought it was pretty funny, so later that day, I started exploring the site myself and oh my god I discovered a treasure trove of amazing cartoons that just 
took over my life. Homestar Runner was legitimately just as important to my childhood as the big, big TV shows like SpongeBob. The website was full of cartoons revolving around this amazing cast of characters, including the Homestar himself, the Cheat, Coach Z, Pom Pom, Marzipan, Bubs, and most importantly, this dude in a wrestling mask and boxing gloves named Strong Bad. I'm Strong Bad, and you don't know it yet, but I'm the reason you're here. It's true. Check me out. No, seriously, check me out. This guy was the biggest jerk on the website, so obviously he was everyone's favorite character. And he had his own show called Strong Bad Emails that was the website's big claim to fame. Every episode saw Strong Bad responding to a fan email, kind of like... It is now time for the Strong Bad email. I wonder what will happen. Dear Strong Bad, Last week, my phone was stolen. How do you keep all your precious electronics safe from thieves? Thanks, Jake. Oh boy, do I know a few things about this, Jakey. It's no secret that my state-of-the-art computers have caught the eyes of many. Electronics really hit their peak resale value after the 40-year mark, you know. So I've had to take some precautions. I can't tell you how many times I've caught Homestar getting his scientifically baffling fingerprints all over my stuff. <laughs> oh, just walking over to my computer and- What? Homestar, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Strong Bad. I'm using your computer box. Isn't that great? Uh, don't you have your own computer? Yeah, but I sold it. Bubs gave me a sweet deal. One $4,000 high-tech computer for singular shoe. Made out like a bandit on that one. Okay, yes, it's all very interesting. But why are you on my computer? Well, if you must know, I'm using it to wipe my Broadway debut. Oh, I am singing. Oh, never before has one sentence caused such indigestion. Looks like it's time to initiate Strong Batty and Security Protocol 931. Don't cheat. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, now that's some security. Nice work to. Ooh. Gee, thanks, Strong Bad. I've always wanted to try acupuncture. Ugh. Nothing gets to you, does it? Yeah, probably. Ugh. Never mind. Apparently not even the threat of immediate violence can get Homestar to leave me alone. And as for you, Jake, you know dang well I'm the one who steals crap around here. And from looking at your recent voicemails, I know that you don't call your mom enough. So there. Pray out. Yeah, it's maybe a little simple by today's standards, but these cartoons hold up. The jokes and animation haven't aged a bit. It's all still just as good today as it was nearly 20 years ago. And what happened next is what we might call an addiction. I had Homestar t-shirts, toys, the CD, the video game, and all these DVDs that are still some of my freaking prized possessions. What you're looking at here is not only my childhood, but also my introduction into the idea of making videos on the internet in the first place. There's a direct line from me watching Homestar in elementary school to me making this video right now. And not a single other person I knew growing up watched it. But I love Homestar Runner. If you've never seen it, you should check it out. It's on YouTube. So I guess the only question left is, did I make this entire video just to talk about Homestar? Oh, yeah, duh. Wait, you think I wanted to talk about this? This makes me itch.